Now watch this. You mean it. These are the last words that Jesus ever spoke. You would think a man's last words would be important. Jesus says, go. Preach. That's not even in the Swahili Bible. Preach. He didn't say go preach. He didn't say go teach. He didn't say go praise God. Go sing songs. Dance up and down in church. He said go make disciples. Well you're clapping but let me ask you. Are you doing it? Listen. I'm not a man you can fool. I am African. I know Africa. I am your brother with white skin. Don't tell me you're making disciples. Because I'm going to say to you, Okay, Buana, show me your Timothy. Where's your Timothy? Where's your Timothy? Where's your Timothy? Nowhere. He's in the Bible, I guess. <laughs> See, without me being too difficult, let me help you understand what it means to make a disciple. You see, the mistaken idea that we have is that we think preaching will make disciples. Or we think Teaching the Bible will make disciples. Are you ready to learn something? Yes. Notice, there are four verbs. Go. Make disciples. Baptize. Teach. Now wait a minute. Make disciples. Teach. Is there a distinction between Teaching and making disciples. I think there is. Because there are people that have been hearing you preach for years who are still babes in Christ. Your preaching did not grow them up. Something's missing. Now, without being mysterious, let me show you what I think the difference is. There is a difference between teaching and training. And this is probably where I think the African church needs to be mentored a little bit. And even as I say this, this is also true in America. There are very few pastors who are really making disciples. And I'm going to teach you this week what that means and how Jesus did it. See, teaching appeals to the mind to understand. Preaching appeals to the heart. For decision, for commitment. Disciple making is training. It is developing skills. The English word skills or ability. Now, if I make a disciple of you, if you become my Timothy, then my responsibility is to grow you up into a mature man or a mature woman. As a Christ follower, I want you to become mature. Much of, much of my disciple making is in giving you skills to do ministry. If I teach you to witness using the evangelical 
I've given you a new skill. Nimekupa maarifa mapya. You now know how to use this. Najua utajua kutumia hii. So I've strengthened your skills. Nimeimarisha ujuzi wako as a soul winner, as a witness. Kwa jinsi ya ku Now, pastor, wachungaji, have you thought about that much of your ministry? Mwaanza kuhusu huduma yako is not about preparing sermons it's not about organizing the church that it's about spending time with one individual two individuals three individuals giving them skills it, it's like mama She teaches the baby how to eat. First she nurses the baby at her breast. Then she teaches the baby to eat solid food. Then she teaches the baby maybe not to eat with her hands but maybe to eat with a fork. She teaches the baby how not to crawl, how to walk. Mama spends her life giving the child skills. Survival skills. Teaching the child how to be safe. That's what disciple making is. It's one man giving another man skills. Now it's more than that. But that's part of it. So you see, I can teach you about prayer. But I'm not making a disciple by just teaching you. But if I meet with you weekly. And you and I get down on our knees together. And I pray with you. And you're hearing me pray. Mze to younger man. I'm making a prayer disciple out of you. Because when you're making disciples they have to see it done. They have to see it. So, I take you witnessing with me. And I show you how to do it. I get you started. I keep you going. I train you so that you can do it yourself. Then I began to challenge you to train somebody else. So the great commission is to go and make disciples. Baptizing them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And notice Jesus said, and I will be with you always. We are here to teach you how to be a new kind of leader. Not all of you will understand what I'm teaching. You will sit in the classes. You will study the, the leader's manual. You will go back home. Put the manual on the shelf. Put the evangelic cube on the shelf. And prepare for the next conference. <laughs> We will feed you, give you materials, and most of you will do nothing. Now, brothers, that's just the truth. If I have 80 of you here today, I would praise God if just 10 of you caught the vision of what we're talking about. Just 10. 10 mighty men of God. Mighty women of God. Who would say yes. Jesus can use me. Yes, one to me. To enlarge the kingdom. To fulfill the great commission. There was a guy at the Entebbe conference. Who was from Rwanda. 
I don't know how he got there. I don't know why he was there. Except that I know God wanted him to be there. That man went back to Kigali. And he told his friends about the Kimak conference. And what God had spoken into his life. Muhizi was a school teacher. His wife was a school teacher. But he had a call. Jesus calls me, I will answer. God was calling him. But he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to get started. He had no skills. And they came on their own. See, my antenna goes up when I see that. This, this brother has a hungry heart. He wants to learn. He's a key man. You can train him. So Mohizi comes to the conference. He goes back to Kigali. Now he's a school teacher. He's not a pastor. But I've given him some tools. He took this little box. Then he began to send me pictures of a little Bible study group he had started using, using the teachings from the manual. Then he began to send me pictures of people he was baptizing. He said, these three ladies have been prostitutes. I am baptizing them. They are changed. Now let me, let me tell you Muhizi's story. Using the evangelist, using the leader's manual, he built a church. Today, Muhizi Pastors a church of 600 people every Sunday. He has a beautiful building. That God has favored him. He introduces me to Timothy. 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 All these men that he's trained. Mohizi has planted 18 churches. They all have pastors. Because he trained the pastor. Now he doesn't even know it. But Mohizi has started a denomination. <laughs> He's a bishop. But he doesn't call himself a bishop. Most guys who call themselves a bishop really are not. He's a servant. And because of his servant leadership, God has exalted him and given him great ministry. I just tell you that success story. Because your name could become Muhizi. You could become a man like that. To change your culture forever. To bring light in the midst of the darkness. If you will go. And you will learn to make disciples. Baptize them. Give the world a visible demonstration of what Jesus is doing. And then Jesus says, I am with you. I am with you. Always. You will not put your foot on any soil. But that Jesus is in front of you. He's behind you, above you, and below you. You say about that two church last year. Amen. All right, brothers, I love you. We're going to have a good time together.